Okay, last main topic for the semester, systems of equations. And I'm guessing you have done something with systems of equations before. You've at least solved linear systems of two equations. What you may not have done is deal with nonlinear systems or with systems that had more than two equations and more than two variables. So we are going to get into all of that. But let's ease into it by thinking about what does the graph of the equation y equals negative 2x plus 1 look like? Like, is it a circle, a parabola, a straight line? Yes, a straight line. In fact, this equation is in slope-intercept form, so I can say right away that this would be a straight line with a slope of negative 2 and a y-intercept at 1. What about the equation y equals 4x minus 5? What does that graph look like? Well, that would be another straight line. This one would have a slope of 4 and a y-intercept down at negative 5. So these two straight lines, are they parallel? No, they don't have the same slope as each other, so they're not parallel. And since they're not parallel, Imagine two straight lines that are not parallel. They must cross somewhere. There must be some point that they have in common. So, where? Well, let's look at the graph. The sort of reddish line is the one with a slope of negative 2 and a y-intercept at 1. The blue line is the one with a slope of 4 and a y-intercept down at negative 5. And can you see the point where these two lines intersect? Yeah, what are the coordinates of that point? 1, negative 1. This is the point where x is positive 1 and y is negative 1. And since that point is part of both lines, that pair of numbers should work in both equations. They should both be true when x is 1 and y is negative 1. Let's try that out. If we put 1 in for x in the top equation, y would be equal to negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, plus 1 is negative 1. And in the second equation, 4 times 1 is 4, minus 5 is negative 1 again, so that does work in both equations. So if we consider them together as a system, that system would be true, that is, both equations would be true at the same time for x equal to Positive 1, y equal to negative 1. So that's the solution to that system. What about the system x minus y equals 2 and y equals negative 2x plus 7? Well, each of these equations has a graph that is a straight line. And if we look for the one point where those two lines cross, the one point they have in common, the coordinates of that point are 3, 1. So that should be the solution to the two equations. They should both be true when x is 3 and y is 1. 3 minus 1 equals 2. 1 equals negative 2 times 3 plus 7. Now let's solve the system by the substitution method. And the reasoning behind the substitution method is... If you've got an equation that tells you that y equals 2x plus 9, that's telling us that y and 2x plus 9 are equal to one another. They represent the same number. So anywhere we see a y, we can put 2x plus 9 in place of that y because they're equal to one another. They represent the same number. So I can say, hey, 2x plus 9, you go in for y in that other equation. I'm making a substitution. I'm sending in one player in, in place of another. So I'm saying where I used to have 2 times y equal to x plus 3, now I have 2 times x plus 9 equal to x plus 3. So that gives me an equation that just has one kind of variable left in it. So then I could finish solving that equation. I get 
4x plus 18 equals x plus 3, and I can work out what x is, and then once I have a number for x, I can put it in for y, and I get my solution to the system of equations. So the way this method of substitution works, here are the steps you go through. Step one, solve one of the equations for one variable in terms of the other. Sometimes you don't have to do that because it's already done for you, but sometimes that's the first thing you need to work out. Then substitute the expression you found in step one into the other equation to obtain an equation in just one variable. Then solve that equation and then take the number you get and substitute it back into the other equation to find the other variable and then check that the solution you get satisfies each of the original equations. So let's work through some examples like that. So first thing we need to do is get one of these equations solved for one of the variables. Either equation, either variable, doesn't matter, whatever's easiest. Looks to me like the easiest thing to do here would be to take the top equation and leave the x where it is, but get rid of the minus 3y so that we have it solved for x. So I can do that by just adding 3y to both sides, and then it says x equals 7 plus 3y. Okay, so that was the easiest way of solving one of these equations for one of the variables. There's other ways I could have done it. I could have left the negative 3y where it is, subtracted the x, and then divided through by negative 3. That would have introduced fractions, so it would have gotten messier than the way we did it, but it would also work. So you can work with either one of the equations. You can solve for either one of the variables. Pick whatever's easiest, and that's usually the variable that doesn't have a coefficient, if you have one like that. So now we're ready to substitute into the other equation, where we used to have negative 5x plus 2y equals 4. Now we get negative 5 times the quantity 7 plus 3y plus 2y equals 4. So we took that bottom equation and we substituted in for x the thing that x was equal to, 7 plus 3y. That gives us an equation that only involves the variable y. So now we sort of temporarily forget that x was even involved, and we go ahead and solve this for y. So remove the parentheses, negative 35 minus 15y plus 2y equals 4. Combine like terms that appear on the same side of the equation. So negative 35 minus 13y equals 4. Get it so that the y term is by itself on one side equal to just a constant term on the other side. So here we would do that by adding 34 to both sides. So negative 13y equals 39. Then go from negative 13y to just plain old y by dividing both sides by negative 13. Then we get y equals negative 3. Are we done? Ah. Eh? Rookie mistake to stop right here, because it looks like we have a solution, but remember, this was a system of equations involving x and y. We are not done until we know both of those variables. So we know that y equals negative 3, but what about x? Well, if y is negative 3, and x is 7 plus 3 times y, we can put the negative 3 in in place of the y and get that x equals 7 plus 3 times negative 3. That would be 7 plus negative 9, which would be negative 2. And now we are done. Once we have both the x and the y together, that's our solution. And we can write it as an ordered pair with the x first, negative 2, negative 3. So graphically, if we drew the graphs of these two equations and look for the point where they cross or intersect, that's the point with an x-coordinate of negative 2 and a y-coordinate of negative 3. So both of these equations should be true if we plug in negative 2 for x and negative 3 for y. Next example. 
Now this is not a linear system because one of the equations has an x squared in it. So that's not a linear equation. But we can still solve by the substitution method. In fact, that's pretty easy to make the substitution because the top equation tells us that y is equal to 5x squared plus 5x. So we can put in 5x squared plus 5x in place of the y in the second equation. So 5x squared plus 5x equals 2x plus 2. So now we have just one equation involving just the variable x. How do we go about solving this equation? Well, this is a quadratic equation. It has an x squared in it. Remember how we solved those? We want to get everything on one side equal to 0 on the other side. So subtract 2x and subtract 2. Then we get 5x squared plus 3x minus 2 equals 0. Where do we go from here? Well, we got a choice. We could use the quadratic formula, or we could see if we could factor this. And in fact, we can factor this. We need a 5x times an x to get 5x squared. If we have a negative 2 times a plus 1, we get the minus 2 on the end, and we want the middle to be plus 3x. So the way to get all that to work is to make it 5x minus 2 times x plus 1, because if you FOIL that out, you get 5x squared plus 5x minus 2x, so there's your plus 3x, minus 2. Now, set each factor equal to 0 and solve for x. So 5x equals 2, x equals 2 over 5. x plus 1 equals 0, x equals negative 1. And those are our two solutions to this equation. But remember, we need a y that goes with each one of those. And since there are two x's, it's important to say what y goes with what x. So the one that goes with x being 2 fifths, would be, we can plug it into either one of these equations, but the bottom one will look simpler to work with. So if I plug in 2 fifths, y equals 2 times 2 fifths plus 2. If x is negative 1, y would be 2 times negative 1 plus 2. So 2 times 2 fifths plus 2 works out to be 4 fifths plus 2, or That would be 4 fifths plus 2. 2 and 4 fifths, or 2.8. You may have noticed I had to go in and fix that. So the correct solution there is for x to be 2 fifths, or 0.4. And the y that goes with that is 2 and 4 fifths, or 2.8. The other x we got was negative 1. And if we stick that in, we get a y equal to 0. So the two solutions, the two pairs of numbers, are 0 0.4, 2.8, .8, and negative 1, 0. And if we looked at the graphs of those two equations, the top one is a parabola, the bottom one is a straight line, and there are two points where they intersect. One of those two points was the point where x was 0.4 and y was 2.8, and the other one was the point where x was negative 1 and y was 0. Okay, I'm going to end this video here and come back in part two and we'll do a couple more examples.